This is the servo motion sequencer, which is designed to give repeatable control inputs to control surfaces on a wind tunnel model. Um, and the control of this device is, is through a number of switches. Uh, there's a power switch, which takes power from the battery and turns the system on and off. Uh, an enable switch, which in one setting enables the motion of the servos, and the other setting resets it and returns the system to standby. There's an automatic manual switch, where in automatic mode the servos go through an automated timed sequence, and in manual mode the user can uh, advance them manually and, and control essentially the duration of each of the steps. Uh, these two switches work together. These are essentially a, a binary combination of, uh, of additive pulse that give variable duration to the servo, uh, or essentially variable deflection magnitude. So in this case it's plus 0.2 milliseconds, and this is defined as the, the half amplitude. So enabling the switch uh, adds essentially control deflection, and enabling this switch adds half of it, and it can be enabled together to give plus 0.3 milliseconds. And this is a momentary switch that, that is used in manual mode to advance the servo uh, whenever the, the user is ready for the next test sequence. It's worth noting that there are two types of switches. One is a latching switch, which essentially will, will move and stay in each direction. And the other one is a momentary switch, which essentially moves away from neutral uh, to the on position and then back to neutral. Uh, in this case, the advanced one is the only momentary switch. All the other ones are latching toggle switches. Uh, an advance happens to work in both directions, both down and up. Uh, but as soon as you let go, it goes back to neutral. So we can start a quick example run, uh, and if we turn on the device, and then it's still in reset mode, we'll leave it in manual mode, and then the plus 2 millisecond and the plus 0.1 millisecond, we'll leave those in the off position, and advance, of course, is sitting there. Uh, so if we enable, then, the servo motion, uh, then the aileron starts to move, and because it's in manual, it's always expecting this advance command to go move on to the next one. And each click of this advance switch then moves the servo to the next position. Uh, and what this will do is it'll sweep through the entire range of ailerons before it goes to the elevator and finally to the rudder. And when it has gone through the complete sequence, then the only way to get it back is to change the enable uh, from enable to reset, puts the system back in standby, and it's ready to start on the next sequence. Here's a look at the servos that correspond to that nominal deflection case where we have selected manual mode. And if we enable the motion, uh, the first thing that the aileron servo does is it moves to about 20 degrees. And then each increment of this manual then moves it maybe 10 degrees or so. Uh, and so once it's completed the, the full sequence, then it returns to neutral. On the subsequent click then moves the elevator servo. So this is clicking through each of the motions where the elevator is finished and finally then the rudder goes through its its own sequence. And when it's finished then the, all the servos return to neutral and subsequent clicks don't do anything until the enable switch is reset, the system goes back into standby and then it can be enabled again. And there you see the aileron motion uh, start with a, roughly the 20 degree deflection. So the advanced switch has a debouncing which prevents essentially uh, prevents the microcontroller from responding rapidly to advanced inputs. Uh, so what this means essentially is that it's it's limited in terms of how fast that you can sequence through these. So if you just take the advanced switch and hold it down, then it steps through at the maximum rate, uh, which is roughly every 0.4 seconds it goes through a sequence. And when it comes to the end, the, all the servos sit at neutral and the system has to be re-enabled. Uh, but also, if at any point, instead of stepping through all the sequence, if you want to just terminate it, the easiest thing to do is just turn the enable switch to reset, and then all the servos go back to neutral and are ready to accept subsequent commands. In the next sequence, what we'll do is we'll enable both the 0.2 millisecond and the 1 millisecond switch. So this, uh, as we mentioned previously, gives essentially a larger buffer or a larger deflection from that neutral. So we go plus 0.2 and plus 0.1 gives a total of plus 0.3 milliseconds uh, on top of that uh, plus or minus 0.2 millisecond pulse. And if we then enable the, uh, the, the sequence and then step through it, then the servo goes through the larger motion. Of course, it's still in manual mode, so it'll step through aileron elevator rudder in sequence according to the advanced switch. So here's a look uh, on the servo side with the, the full width deflection. And once we've enabled the servo, 
the serve of motion, then the aileron moves to the maximum deflection of roughly 40 degrees, and that's gone from a plus or minus 0.2 millisecond pulse to a plus or minus 0.5 millisecond pulse, which is about the full range of deflection. So this is uh, the aileron servo sitting at, at about one, one millisecond pulse, roughly. And as we sequence through it then, the individual steps are much larger than it was in that nominal case. Uh, and so as we step through then the elevator and rudder then they move through their corresponding sequence. And it's worth noting then that the elevator servo is not exactly lined up on zero and this is just due to the cogging of that servo arm with that servo spline. Uh, and because the system doesn't have any function to trim the servo, then each the, all this trimming function will have to be done mechanically. Uh, and that means then that you, when you do mechanical trims, this is going to give you symmetric deflections on either side. So it's important for the trim to be as close to neutral as possible. For the final sequence, we'll leave the, the variable pulse switches uh, both on. So we have uh, plus 0.3 milliseconds relative to the nominal. And the difference right now, we'll switch from manual to automatic and then we'll enable the servo motion. And then what this does is it goes through that timing sequence, so the servo moves automatically without having to step it through manually. Here finally is the servo view of the automatic motion. When the switch is enabled, aileron goes to its maximum position um, on, on one extreme deflection, and every five seconds then it steps through the sequence. So this is the, the configuration that's best suited for a wind tunnel measurement system that's working and, and is collecting data constantly. And if you want to just run through the uh, control surface sequence without actually having to step through, then this is probably a good method of doing that, uh, where uh, essentially flip the switch to automatic and then the aileron elevator and rudder servos go through and, and finish the sequence. So it's about six steps at each control surface because there's a neutral that separates uh, the elevator, the aileron elevator and rudder. And it goes through it in about a minute roughly. Uh, and once it's done, then all servos go back to neutral, and then the system can be turned to reset to enable it, or to disable it, rather. So if during this automatic servo motion sequence you want to stop, uh, you can pause briefly in, by going to into manual mode, uh, and then what it will do is it will go just to that next sequence, and then stop there waiting for their input, and then you can step through all the subsequent cycles using that manual advance switch. So about the only thing that can't be changed during the actual sequence runtime uh, is the, the deflection magnitude of the servo. So changing the plus 0.2 or plus 0.1 millisecond pulse has no effect once the switch is already enabled. So essentially these only are called, or the, the function that, that changes the deflection of the servo is only called when, uh, when the servo motion sequencer essentially first enters that function. And once it then takes those values, then it's going to keep those as constant throughout the entire sequence. This is essentially so that when you're commanding elevator, you can't suddenly change the deflection magnitude. That all of the sequence of elevator in a single run, uh, then is, are, they're guaranteed to be uh, the, the same essentially deflection ratio. The power to the servo motion sequencer is essentially just a, a regular RC battery. And as long as the voltage is above 6 volts and below roughly 12 volts, the onboard regulator will provide 5 volts to the servos and it's limited to 1 amp so that depending on the type of servo used that that may be an issue and you may want to go direct power to the servos